Why is school such an awful experience for so many kids? And why do young people seem so uninterested in learning? According to Paolo Freire in his 1968 book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, school sucks because it's not designed to educate children. It's designed to make them docile and passive servants to an oppressive system. Most people agree that school is a terrible, terrible experience. I'm a teacher and I can see firsthand just how many kids hate coming to school. Friere understood that school does not have to be this way. School sucks because it's designed to oppress young people and to groom them into a life of servitude. But what if we redesigned education so that instead of being a tool of oppression, it encouraged a genuine love of learning by focusing on issues that affect young people and their communities, and in the process, equipped those young people with the skills and the knowledge they need to liberate themselves from oppression and to create a better world. But before we get stuck into the book, let's learn a little bit about the author. Paulo Freire was a Brazilian educator and philosopher. Freire didn't do very well at school. He ended up four grades behind. This is because poverty and hunger severely affected his ability to learn. But nonetheless, Freire did eventually go to university where he studied law and philosophy. And as an adult, Freire became a teacher and later he worked with illiterate peasant communities helping them to read and write. Whilst he was working on literacy with peasant communities, Freire developed his own philosophy of education and oppression, which would eventually be outlined in his iconic 1968 book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. This book is a very big deal and it made a huge impact on the world of education. Freire is widely considered to be the father of something called critical education theory. When I did my teacher training, Pedagogy of the Oppressed was a set text. We all had to read it, we had to attend lectures on it and write an essay about it. It made a big impact on me and my beliefs about education. The central question of Freire's book is, how can we create an education system with oppressed people for oppressed people that will help to liberate oppressed people? But before we can design an education system that will empower and liberate oppressed people, we first need to understand the oppressive nature of the current education system so we can begin to dismantle it. Freire believes that our current education system is oppressive and it's designed to disempower working class young people. He calls this the banking model of education. The banking model of education has a fundamentally narrative nature. The teacher speaks and the student listens. The teacher knows everything and the student knows nothing. The teacher punishes, the student gets punished. There's a power imbalance. The teacher knows everything and does everything. The student is passive, they're docile. They are empty, they do not have knowledge, they are going to be fed knowledge by the teacher. In the banking model of education, the student's job is not to think or to question what the teacher's saying. The student is merely meant to memorise what the teacher says. This is called the banking model of education because, according to Freire, the teacher makes daily deposits of information that the students store in their brain, much like one would deposit money into a bank. And the information that the teacher delivers is always detached from a student's lived reality and their life experience. So it feels boring and irrelevant. Banking education tends to describe reality as something that's static and unable to change. The banking system of education is designed to minimise students' creative power and their critical awareness. The students are disempowered because they perceive education as boring and reality as unchangeable. Freire claims that education is designed this way so that people don't think critically about their own oppressive situations and so that they don't have the cognitive skills needed to resist oppression. Freire claims that in an oppressive society, education is designed to change the consciousness of the oppressed rather than the situation that oppresses them. So in short, banking education is designed to make young people into passive, docile workers who will blindly accept their own oppression without even realising that they're being oppressed. But Freire proposes an alternative style of education, 
one which is designed to empower and to liberate oppressed people. He calls this style of education problem-posing education. Unlike banking education, problem-posing education has a heavy focus on dialogue, discussion and shared learning between teachers and students. In problem-posing education, the teacher starts by presenting a problem that directly affects the lives of the students and their communities. And through dialogue, he encourages the students to analyse how and why those problems exist and how they can be overcome. The students are no longer docile listeners. They're co-investigators in dialogue with the teachers. As students are increasingly posed problems relating to themselves and the world, they develop a critical consciousness about the world and about the society they live in. They may also begin to notice that the world's problems are not separate issues, but are interrelated and intersectional, and that somebody is profiting from these problems. They may also begin to perceive reality, not as static and unchangeable, but instead as a process which is always being transformed and which they are capable of transforming. So for example, the teacher could start with a question like, why is there so much pollution in our community? And through discussion and co-investigation, the teachers and the students would explore the factors that lead to pollution, the politics of the pollution, who's profiting, who's losing out, what are the alternatives, what could the community do to reduce the pollution, how can they hold energy companies accountable. The conversation could go in loads of different directions and it's not the teacher's job to tell the students what to think but it would inevitably lead to the students thinking in a critical way about the society they live in. They would get to practice voicing their opinions and coming up with creative solutions to real world problems that affect their lives. Friere stresses that at the heart of problem posing education is dialogue. A dialogue cannot be reduced to one person depositing ideas into another person's mind. Dialogue is an act of creation between two or more people. According to Freire, dialogue cannot exist without a profound love for the world and its people. You can't initiate dialogue if you're being hateful or if you don't respect the people you're supposed to be in dialogue with. Dialogue cannot be tolerated by oppressors because dialogue is empowering. That's why oppressive education relies on silencing students because silence is disempowering. By the way, if you get value from my content and you want to support what I do, please consider becoming a patron. The link is in the description to this video and in my Instagram. Um, if you would like to support my channel, but not financially, that's completely fine. I would really, really appreciate it if you could just subscribe to my channel, like this video and just support me in any way you can. As a teacher, I have a lot of respect for Freire's ideas. But in my experience, it's not always that easy to directly apply problem-posing education into my lessons. The British education system is set up for banking style education and that's what it encourages. I try and subtly sneak in a bit of Friarian dialogue in the way that I teach my lessons. So for example, instead of being like, here's a painting by Frida Kahlo, it represents X, Y, Z. I would be like, here's a painting by Frida Kahlo, what do you think it means? So instead of telling the students what to think, I'm getting them to exercise their own critical thinking, make judgments for themselves, develop meaning for themselves, and to reflect on the artwork and the world. That's just a small thing. You can also kind of scale it up sometimes, but you have to, like, you can't always do this, but you could be like, you could pull up a news article which is all about how the British Museum won't give a African artifact back to the country it came from. And you could just say, do you think this is fair? And you could generate discussion and hopefully you could get the students to reflect on the role of the museum, the history of colonialism, inequality, fairness. You could even get to capitalism from there. And without telling the students what to think, you can get them to reflect on the gross inequality that exists today because of the history of colonialism. And you don't actually have to tell them any of that, you can just help them figure it out. You can get them to tell it to you. Um, so those are some of the ways that I personally would use Paolo Freire's 
ideas within a lesson. I decided to talk about this book because I think it's a very powerful and transformative concept for society. And it's becoming increasingly obvious that we're living in a very oppressive, violent world and that the government doesn't act in our best interests and power is not being held accountable. At the same time, our school system is failing most of its students and it's not adequately preparing them for the violent and oppressive world that they will soon enter. If we would like to live in a better world, we're going to need to equip them with all the tools they need to recognise and to dismantle inequality, racism, climate destruction, all forms of oppression. And that desperately needs to happen as soon as possible because the planet is only getting more violent, more racist, more oppressive, more authoritarian, and we need to make sure the next generation are prepared for that, otherwise they're screwed. If you liked this video, you might also like these videos. Um, yeah, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.